match with gym leader Gio and the San Francisco Giantes. This is week five of season seven of the GBA, and this is actually my first match taking over the Utah Jasmine. So uh, coming off of really um, large shoes to fill with Cooper there. But I did want to give you guys a, just a brief overview of what I'm bringing. Uh, first up is going to be our dedicated lead, barring a weird scenario. It's going to be X-Ray Belt Zapdos. We have just enough speed in order to outrun Max Speed Adamant Arcanine, or if um, Gyarados is Jolly Max Speed, we can outrun both of those, which is really nice. This also, uh, I just so happen to have um, traded, like, I think I got that during Fort Gym, but I happen to have an HP Water Zapdos, which is fantastic for this matchup because I actually was, I thought he was going to have Aerodactyl up until about 24 hours ago. And uh, it turns out that he had switched over to Rhyperior. And I, for some reason, thought it was going to work for his next week match and not my match because I'm still due to the, how the GBA works. So with that in mind, Zapdos basically uh, is going to be a nice pivot for things like Arcanine and Conkleder. Uh It hits everything else really hard, bar Heliolisk, and even that with Dry Scan gets hit relatively hard by the Heat Wave. Hidden Power Water is just there for Rhyperior. I don't want it to think it can just switch in for free. Uh, I did go modest with max special attack and expert belt because I do I, I really like the idea of being able to bluff Choice Scarf because um, that seems like something that will work against this team pretty well. I actually had Swallow in that slot for the longest. Uh, Roos is just there because I don't actually have hazard removal, so in case I need to restore Zapdos's HP, I need access to that. Pokemon number two is going to be Hippowdon, and this is going to be my answer to his Z Captain Salamence. Uh, Salamence can run Z Fly, um, it can get a Dragon Dance up and use Dragonium Outrage, and all those things hurt. But Hippowdon can actually live any one of those hits. So whether it be getting him to burn his Z move and then slack off the damage, or uh, just preventing him from setting up, Hippowdon's really nice for that. It's also nice for uh, switching into Arcanine and Conkleder, because I'm pretty sure Salamence, Arcanine, and Conkleder, and Amoongus are coming. So I need something to switch into those first three. And uh, they all hit relatively hard. So I, I need something that can not only recover HP, but also setting up the Sandstorm will whittle them down. If any of them are carrying Life Orb or the Flame Orb on Conkleder, that'll help whittle them down too. That's going to be a general game plan here because Geo's team has to kind of be whittled down a little bit before I can break through it. Now I do have Stealth Rocks here, kind of mandatory. If he uh, leads with Rhyperior and I lead with Zapdos, I'm going to get to go out to Hippowdon and then set up my rocks. Otherwise, I just get to free Volt Switch off. Uh, next up is Klefki, which is kind of like a tech utility Pokemon for this team. I did go, once again, max defense because of those three or four Pokemon that I'm sure he's going to be bringing. Uh, I decided to go with these four moves just because of the ability for me to uh, entry hazard stack on him, which is going to be fun, hopefully. And then secondly, um, Dazzling Gleam is really, really nice if I just have to click an attack against Salamence or Conkledur, uh to a lesser extent Umbreon. I don't see Umbreon coming, but um, initially it was a dual screen set, but I decided to switch it over just because this right here is a little bit more of a catch-all. If something goes weird and then Salamence manages to set up on me, I can T-wave it. If something goes weird and Arcanine gets a crit on something, <laughs> then I can at least set up a reflect before my cleft key goes down. So like, I have a few different scenarios that I'm thinking of there. Um, but yeah, just bold max defense here because it looks like he's gonna bring, be bringing more physical attacks than special attackers. Uh, and it's nice too for Gyarados if again, Dragon Dance gets out of hand somehow. Uh, but between Zapdos and Lantern, even though he has Rhyperior, um, I can actually pressure him a lot just by Volt switching around. And if he brings in Rhyperior, then both of my Volt Switchers have water moves for it. And they both also outspeed it unless he has a huge speed investment on Rhyperior. And then that makes him a lot easier to knock out. So Lantern has just enough so that it um, can take on Tapu Fini and be like four hit KO'd or something like that with um, Assault Vest. Lantern is a really nice general switch into Tapu Fini. And if Gengar or Bronzong happen to be Scarfed or an offensive Bronzong like in their Trick Room, Lantern is nice against those. I do have to be careful with Giga Drain or Earthquake um, on the aforementioned threats, 
but even with um, Giga Drain, I can still take one of those and get some decent damage off. Uh, Lantern is also really nice in case he gets cheeky and decides to bring Heliolisk. I completely wall that thing. So um, it's literally three hit KO'd, I think, by uh, Life Orb Hyper Voice. So yeah, that'll be fun. Um, up next is Scrafty, and this is going to be a fun set for me. It's a Rest Bulk Up set with Drain Punch and Knock Off. Basically, a pure, it can set up on Bronzong. It's a pure switch into a Moongus. Uh, it can also set up on the Umbreon. It'll probably scare out the Rhyperior. Uh, and then after a couple of Bulk Ups, then I can take on... Um, maybe coverage coming from Gyarados or something like that. I don't want to leave it in against Tapu Fini or Gengar because they can both use their fairy type moves. Gengar does get access to Dazzling Gleam, so we want to be careful with that. Uh, but there's just enough investment right there in order for it to not be one hit KO, or in order to avoid the two hit KO, excuse me, from uh, like Tapu Fini, uh, weird coverage. Like if I come in and he's like running a Specs Tapu Fini, okay, I can live a couple surfs. If I come in on um, Heliolisk, that allows me to take at least three moves from most Heliolisk sets. So, uh, yeah, Scrafty is going to be fun there. And then my other Pokemon that can set up and, at the very least, threaten a lot of things here. Because I am worried about Scarf Gengar. I am worried about, even to an extent, Scarf Gyarados. And Arcanine gets extreme speed. So, I want that fast option in the back if I need it. And that's what Cloyster is here for. I did not go purely attack or purely special attack because if I went all the way on one end, something walls me, and same on the other end. So by going in the middle, I can hit Tapu Fini with uh, Rock Blast, or I can hit Bronzong with Hydro Pump. Uh, after a Shell Smash, most things don't like taking Ice Shard. I do need to remove Conkeldur, um, to, and I need to at least whittle Bronzong some before I try to set up here. But... Uh, it's, it's going to be nice to at least clean up with it, hopefully. And that's another check in the very, very back for something like Mints or Gyarados if they get two set up. And out of hand, a Life Orb uh, Stab Ice Shard is still going to hurt them. I don't even need a Shell Smash to KO Salamence with an Ice Shard. So that is just a little overview of the team, and I hope you guys found this useful. I'm just going to do brief overviews of the team right before I get into the battle instead of dedicating a whole team builder to it because for me it's a little bit more seamless uh, if you guys would prefer for me to take a little bit more time with the team builders feel free to let me know and i will make adjustments as necessary but thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoy the battle bye now Alrighty, guys thank you so much for taking a moment to watch my team builder or if you skip directly to this part of the video i don't blame you to give you a brief rundown we have an offensive zapdos again lantern with the assault vest Dual Screens, Klefki, Bulk Up, Scrafty, uh, Max Defensive Poudon, and then a Mixed, Naive, Max Speed, uh, Shell Smash, Cloyster. When I saw Geo's team for this battle, um, there were actually, I was, I was relatively pleasantly surprised to not see a few Pokemon, uh, but the presence of Gengar and Salamence in there, and Conkeldur, which I were pretty sure were coming, um, meant I had to approach this really carefully. The main game plan, of course, was still to Volt Switch around a good bit and try to get, get up Entry Hazards to help soften up his defensive switch-ins till I could break down his core. Now, it was really nice to not see Arcanine, especially with the team that I brought, because that alleviated a, the pressure from Hippowdon to take additional hits from Salamence and Conkeldur and Hippowdon. Uh, so, uh, with Hippo's role freed up, I decided to leave with Zapdos, just like I said I would, because unless he led with Salamence or maybe Gengar. Uh, Zapdos gets a free Volt Switch off, and I can inv I have good coverage against his whole team. He doesn't he didn't even bring his Rhyperior for this matchup, so Volt Switching was the way to go here between Zapdos and my Lantern. Now, specifically for this matchup, um, running modest Zapdos was pretty important. I actually um, was running Calyx to see like, okay, can I get away with Timid and invest more, or go modest or get more bulk? But going modest with that speed tier that we spoke about with the team builder was pretty good. He didn't bring the Arcanine or the Gyarados, so investing that much speed didn't end up mattering. But he actually does end up leading off with his Bronzong, which um, I'm just going to stay in here Heat Wave, expecting him to set up Stealth Rocks. Uh, I did not mind trading those at all because Stealth Rocks didn't hamper my team too much, except for Zapdos. 
And if he brought Defog on top of Feeny and I set up Injury Hazard, he'd be forced to get rid of his own rocks too. He surprised me with Toxic there. That's going to greatly, greatly dampen Zapdos's uh, longevity for the rest of the match. But at the same token, he trades that for me taking out his bronze on. So I am okay with that because uh, that means if you're levitate, I don't have to worry about Hippowdon being walled by it and things like that. Uh, here, just in case he had Ice Punch, we're gonna go directly out into Clef Key. He does go for a knockoff, predicting me to swap out, which is fine, but Clef Key being max defense is my main switch in here. And I can see what he wants to go for. I decided to set up a Reflect in case he had Fire Punch. Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and Thunder Punch were all very real threats here. And I wanted to be able to cover any of those moves with Reflect Up, I can live them all. Now he does go for Bulk Up, which I was like, wow, did he did he read the notes on my Scrafty set? I'm going for Bulk Up like that. But fortunately for me, I have Dazzling Gleam, and if he has Bulk Up, that means he can't have Assault Vest. So I'm able to at least do solid damage. That's completely uninvested uh, special attack damage on him there. And if he's going to stay in here to hit me, I'm at least going to make him pay for it. Um, the other thing I could have done there, I could have also set up Entry Hazards, but I didn't know what his set was. Right now we just know Drain Punch, Knock Off, and Bulk Up. The last move being a coverage move, I'm wary about switching something in here because the wrong coverage move will end one of my Pokemon. Uh, I thought he might swap out here, but this is my first time battling Geo and I was just watching all of his matches. And um, so I decided to go straight for the Dazzling Gleam in case he tried to stay in and um, just get off a little bit more damage. Uh, I could have also set up my light screen. I could have put up spikes. I could have I had a few options there, but uh, with him um, into Amoongus now, he actually surprised me with how much damage that hidden power fired in. And at first I was like, is he Specs Amoongus? And so I roost because I wanted to see if he just went for hidden power fire again or if he swapped out. Uh, but then he goes for a sludge bomb and whoa, that does way too much damage. And this is an offensive Amoongus. We have to get out of here because now Zapdos can't KO it with one hit from here uh, just because of Amoongus' naturally high HP. And I also don't know what his item is at this point. So the best thing to do here is his Wolf Switch out into Scrafty. The special defense and HP investment mean that even though it's an offensive Amoongus, I can take that hit very comfortably and then go for knockoff to see what he has going off there. Either I'm going to get rid of his recovery item or in this case, Assault Vest. He won't be able to take hits as well later on. So I'm really happy to get rid of the Assault Vest on Amoongus. That's going to make it much easier to take down. Um, fortunately, since he is offensive, that actually threw off a lot of my, when I was trying to calc a few things, because I didn't know what type of bulk he had invested. I didn't know if he just went max HP, max special attack, or if he EV to take certain things. Um, here I figured he would swap out and I just wanted to keep on removing items where I could. And so I just went for a knockoff again as the Tapu Fini comes in. Seeing that damage, I definitely know that it's a little bit more um, offensive because that resisted knockoff, that did a decent amount. So I was kind of okay just swapping out there. I go straight on the Lantern, which is my dedicated check to the Tapu Fini. Granted, he could run Hidden Power, but um, with, the, with my own Assault Vest, it wouldn't do too much damage. Uh, I make a little bit of a misplay here. I thought for sure he would just stay in and go for a coverage move, and so I went for Thunderbolt. But he does go directly onto Amoongus, but since I have max special attack investment, Amoongus actually takes a fair bit from the uh, Thunderbolt. Um, I go back out into Scrafty. I didn't want to sack it because no one really wants to hear Aaron scream like that. But what I did want to do is go, okay, he'll probably swap out again, so maybe I can knock off something else's item before Scrafty goes down. Because the set that I brought to this matchup just isn't as useful, especially with Conkledur and Salamence in the back. I get a nice critical hit knockoff, that crit damage doesn't end up mattering, but that's always good for morale when your troops are in battle, like Scrappy's feeling pretty good about that, I'm sure. Um, I decide to swap out here, again, I don't wanna hear Scrappy scream, and it still has utility, I can still set it up and use rest at some point. We go out in the Clef Key this time, just because he saw me swap to Lantern already, um, and I, I only know that he has leftovers in Moonblast, so I still don't have enough information about this Pokemon to try doing anything really to it. And I was afraid to bring in Zapdos to hit it really hard because I didn't know um, if I could take it out on a hit or not. So as I set up spikes, I see Calm Mind. And I was like, oh, that's actually great. He might not have Defog if he has Calm Mind. Like maybe going Calm Mind, Surf, 
a hidden power and moon blast or um or maybe even call mine taunt i actually go for thunder wave there just in case he keeps setting up but i miss it and that's a little bit of a bad trade-off because he gets rid of my two layers of spikes and i don't even have a paralyzed happy Feeny to show for it i could have gone for the um thunder wave again but seeing that he's liking to, he likes swapping around with the Amoongus, and we still have Gengar in the back as well with Conkledur, I need to have at least some type of entry hazard up. On the alternative, I need to force him to go for a defog so that um, he can, I can get a free turn in here somewhere, basically. Uh, even at plus two special defense, he does not take that Volt Switch well. I think a Thunderbolt actually would have KO'd if I had carried it. Side note, HP Water was completely useless, so even though I had that Zapdos from way back then with Power Water, it didn't help out at all. Unfortunately, we finally had to let Scrafty go down here, but I do get to bring back in Zapdos and um, off of uh, Scrafty's Sacrifice, and then I get to go for my Volt Switch finally. Now that does take down the Tapu Fini, which is really nice because that does alleviate a lot of pressure off of my team. And I can also just Volt Switch out into Lantern to keep this Volt Switch train going. Um, because his Amoongus is offensive, I wasn't sure if he would be running any type of investment. So I just stayed in here and went for Ice Beam knowing with my Assault Vest I can live a Giga Drain very comfortably. Uh, he actually goes for Sludge Bomb, probably predicting me to go on to my Zapdos. And so that's great because I get out of that with far more HP than I would have if he had used Giga Drain. And he has to swap to get the Regenerator because uh, he lost all that HP from the Ice Beam. I decided to just click Ice Beam here again because I decided if he swapped in the Conkledur for a Sacrifice, after the Spikes, his Conkledur probably wouldn't be able to take an Ice Beam. And then also covered the possible option of him staying in with the Amoongus. Now right here, I was afraid of him going for a Dragon Dance, thinking that I'd swap out in case he went for a Z, Earthquake, or uh, Tectonic Rage. And so I just stayed in and went for Ice Beam. Um, I could have very easily swapped out to a Paladon to take this move, but it just really wasn't worth the risk because he still had Gengar in the back and I didn't know if Gengar had Giga Drain or anything like that or like a Specs Gengar and then my Assault Vest isn't doing as much. Uh, I was really worried about him having enough investment to live in Ice Shard from full. And so we're gonna go for it and he lives on a sliver and I was like, uh oh, if he's Draco Meteor, this is gonna be a bad day. But he's Outrage and I know I can live the Outrage. Thank goodness, that's why we, uh, you optimize those EVs there where you can. Um, but fortunately, we are able to take out the, the Salamence. It is a good thing that he had the Z Crystal there, because if he had a Life Orb or even like any type of boosting item, that would have been in for Cloyster. But in this manner, we get to at least get off more damage on Gengar um, and see if Gengar wants to go for any type of setup move. Like if he had a substitute Gengar, that could have been a little bit of a, an annoyance here for sure. The Gengar just goes for Shadow Ball, and I was like, oh, hey, awesome. That means I can go out into a Hippowdon, and we can set up the sand and get some nice chip damage on it. And in the off chance that he has the tech synthesis assault vest Amoongus, Sandstorm would stop his synthesis from recovering as much HP as well. Um, Shadow Ball does way too much damage, but fortunately, Gengar is now grounded in seventh generation. And unfortunately for me, he gets the cursed body on the Earthquake and of course, Earthquake was my only offensive move here. So I was debating here, this was a really big 50-50 because if he went for Giga Drain right now, and um, he would not only KO my Hippowdon, but he would also get back enough HP to possibly live a Heat Wave. But if he went for Sludge Bomb and I switched into Zapdos, then I definitely lose. But I figured since my Cursed Body had activated on my um, Earthquake, the best move there for me was just to swap directly into Zapdos because he has been attacking what's directly in front of him the majority of this time, except for against Lantern, where I didn't switch out and he was expecting me to switch out. And so I'm able to come in there and because Scrafty knocked up the Assault Vest and the Amoongus earlier in the game, Zapdos is able to KO it with a Heat Wave. So that was a very close 2-0 victory there. And that was an, a very intense match, I have to say, just because of the amount of prep that went into it and the, and of course this is my first match in the GBA so I really wanted to um, I don't know is prove myself the right word that might not be the right phrase because everyone in the GBA is pretty awesome so I don't know I guess I just wanted to show that Cooper placed the team in good hands so I wanted to have a really good battle with Geo which I did have so thank you very much Geo for the battle 
I hope you guys did enjoy watching this first battle of mine in the GBA. And um, the next match is actually up against Envy and the Chim Chargers. And wow, I've, I really should have already started prepping for that because I know I have some breeding ahead of me. But uh, oh, thank you very much to. Um, I don't remember who. Oh, I put his information in the description. Uh, Zick Click. He actually is the one who recorded this battle for me in the crispy quality that looks so delicious and tasteful and the textures and the flavors and all that good stuff. So if you need another new YouTuber to watch, be sure to go check out Geo because his side of the battle will be up and I'll also put um, the GBA channel in the description as well. And if you have any further questions, feel free to add them in the description and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much so for watching there. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.